<laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this, but back in the day, Anytime there was an opportunity for a group photo, everybody would hand their cameras over to this one unlucky person. Now, that poor bastard would have to take the exact same photo like 17 times. It was, to say the least, inefficient. The birth of digital sharing obviously changed all of that, and it seems that the automotive industry was paying close attention. After a brief absence, Nissan reintroduces this, the 2022 Livina. No, there isn't a glitch in the matrix. You've definitely seen this shape before. And if what comes to mind is the Mitsubishi Expander, you'd be right. Well, except maybe for this sweet red though. That's pretty awesome, huh? Do you need help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph car insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. There is a good reason why the Livina looks so similar to the Expander, and that's because of the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi Alliance, or just simply known as the Alliance. In May of 2016, Nissan began the acquisition of 34% stake in Mitsubishi Motors with the aim of making Nissan the largest and controlling shareholder of Mitsubishi and turning Mitsubishi Motors into a member of the Renault-Nissan Alliance. Nissan also planned to share some car platforms and jointly develop future vehicles with Mitsubishi Motors through a cross-sharing agreement. The Alliance also believes in the principle of cross-shareholding investments, where each company acts in the financial interest of the other while maintaining brand identity. So that guy taking the photo is an in-law. They're not related, but there's no reason why he wouldn't share that photo on the group chat to like save time and money. Nissan and Mitsubishi have done just that. For instance, Underneath, you will find the same 1.5-liter four-cylinder gasoline engine that produces 103 horses and 141 newton meters of torque, mated to, yep, you guessed it, a four-speed automatic transmission. So it would only be logical that the fuel efficiency would be the same as the expander, which is 10 inside the city, and that on the highway, you can push it to 22 and a half. Now, it's the same platform, no doubt. Similar DRLs, but different shaped halogen headlamps and fog lamps found on the chin. And the V-Motion grille are one of the slight differences that Nissan has injected to maintain a brand identity. Chrome is found on the window sills after each pillar, on the side mirrors, which have repeaters, by the way, and the door handles. The accent color on the front chin continues down the side, which helps sort of accentuate the 205 millimeters of ground clearance, a bit less than the expander. Disc brakes up front and drums at the rear sit behind the 16s wrapped in 55 series tires. I like this blacked out portion by the D pillar because then it gives it sort of like an illusion of a floating roof line. Huh? The top portion of the rear is almost an exact replica. The rear lights, yeah, that's for sure. The changes appear on the bottom half with different cuts and a pair of accents found down below. More of Nissan's brand identity can be actually found on the rear tail lamp. Not the shape per se, because that's, well, it's still expander, but the pattern inside is very Nissan because there's a, there's a V that can be found right there. And that can be found on the new Almera and as well, most recently, on the Kicks, which is an electric vehicle, but it charges with a gasoline motor. 
Interested? Intrigued? The links are somewhere up here or found in the description below. Now, back to the Levina. Space, as you would imagine, is the same with the Levina and the Expander, where in the back with the third row in play, definitely an overnight bag, uh, care, hand carry luggage, stroller, or a collapsed wheelchair. But when you fold the third row, then you can start going on upon boxes and boxes and boxes that you can load inside the automobile, and even more so when you fold the second row, which is a 60-40 split. Now, I am just going to pop these guys back up again because now I want to take you inside the Levina. I really like this color. Ingress and egress is made easy, but the fact that the second row collapses, or rather tumbles forward, my apologies. Um, the third row is decent enough for short trips and shorter people or under tall adults like myself. Cup holders on either door with a small little cubby here and found up here. Uh, no air vents, but uh, the, the air vents for the second row are actually pretty close because it's not a very large vehicle. And then you only have one charging point, which is a 12 volt socket found right there. The leg room is, well, it's decent if the second row is sort of like a bit generous to you, giving you a little bit more space. The seats do slide forward and back, which is great. So if they are being generous because they have much room uh, up front for themselves, then great. If not, then yeah, I would definitely just use this area, definitely for just for kids, or better yet, just collapse it and use it as cargo space. Uh, excuse me, hello, hello. Oh, look at that, huh? <laughs> Dude, that's so easy. Space in the second row is actually eh, quite decent. Uh, I'll be upfront with you and say that that is my normal driving position. This is being generous to the third row. If I wanted to be ge more generous to the third row, I'd move it up like yay, like Yay. Yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is being generous for, I guess, for all. This is for like Kako height driving, Kako height second and third row. That's a lot of Kakos. That's a lot of Kakos. This would be Jack. I mean, that, that amount of space. So definitely if I were driving a Jack who is over six feet tall or close to six feet tall rather, would definitely fit back here. Uh, points back here is that there are no charging points found here, none whatsoever. So it's odd that there's only one charging point and it's found for the third row, none for the second row. However, there are air vents, large air vents found here up on top with uh, an air or rather a air control uh, found right there. And then, oddly enough, yes, there is a center armrest, but there are, there are rather, no cup holders. However, that's okay because the bottle holders on the door, on the door cards, they're huge. I mean, my bottle can easily fit in all three slots. That is just, that's nuts, man. That's huge. Oh, and then before I get to the front, I gotta show you, I don't know if you can see it, maybe better with the door open. There are a lot of shapes and textures you would think on the door, but it's actually all pretty durable plastic, which means that it's easy to clean. But what I like about it is that it doesn't actually look like scratchy plastic. It's actually, it's a fake out. You don't even know. You can't see me. No, that's just wrong. I'm getting all my, refer my pop references wrong, Jack. This is what happens when I hang out with you. Now on to the business end. I'm gonna start the engine because it's a bit warm today. Um, I can't help but notice that the instrument cluster is much like a Mitsubishi actually, from the analog gauges to the trip computer in the center, which is colored to, down to the info button that's found on the left. Here, I'll even bring it one step further. This is now the key of the Livina. This is the key of our Montero. See that? Pretty similar, right? So anyway, to continue, um, the steering wheel is telescopic, which is great. Yeah, easily adjust to uh, the perfect driving position. There are buttons on the steering wheel for your audio controls. However, unfortunately, no cruise control is found in this automobile. There is a seven inch touchscreen infotainment system with a reverse camera. It's a bit dark, but it gets the job done. The sad thing though, is that it has no Apple CarPlay, nor does it have Android Auto. It can connect to your phone via Bluetooth and a auxiliary cord. 
But when you try to connect, let's say, for example, your Apple phone to, to, to mirror it, unfortunately, it can't because it doesn't support anything past iOS 13. And Jack tells me that now the latest is, what, 15? 15. So that's a bit odd. Uh, your air controls are found right underneath, which are uh, obviously manual, and it doesn't have a digital screen. Um, you've got your USB port down here, uh, charging point there. Uh, this is, sorry, not the charging point, but 12-volt socket, uh, a manual parking brake. And then, unfortunately, there are some black plastics that are found, a lot, actually, black plastic found around the car, including on the steering wheel. What I like, though, is that there's also a lot of storage space inside this automobile. From this uh, mimicked similar uh, space here for maybe even a tissue box, your wallet or your phone, to a very, very large glove compartment. You've got more storage found down here where I actually put the keys. Cup holders that will fit even large bottles like mine. You've got a cubby here in the center, which is big enough even to carry an iPad mini. That's what I like. And then, of course, the, the door cards, which, again, can carry not just one, but two bottles of quite large sizes. I like that. Before we hop on the road to find out if Nissan has perhaps changed some aspects of the automobile to make its driving dynamics more innate to being a Nissan, we will ask you guys that if you found this video useful, fun, or entertaining, do give us a like if you deem it fit, and please give us a subscription. One of the first things I noticed when driving the Livina is that visibility is excellent, and I really do mean excellent. The windshield is massive, uh, the windows on the side are huge too, and then you've got the quarter windows that allow even more visibility. And it seems as if when you're driving this car, you really have like a 180 degree view of the road, and it's great. It's not completely flat, the dashboard, but it's flat enough that you really have a great view of the road. And you sit quite high too. You sit naturally quite high. Yes, there is a way to adjust the seat to make it a little bit lower. And I'm actually at its lowest point right now. But yet even then, I still have a great view of the road. You know, considering that this is a family automobile, it'd be great to purchase a car like this because not only do you have a family automobile, but I'm thinking that in the sense that when my son, who is turning 16 to, uh, soon, when it's his turn to start learning how to drive, this would be a great car to, to, to practice on when he's got his permit. Because instead of new drivers, you know, sort of like always want to sing, sit up high and, and lean so much closer, in this automobile, it doesn't seem like you need to at all because Wow, really, the visibility is, it's really excellent. The steering is, well, there's good and bad to it. Uh, in traffic, it's not so great because it tends to relax a bit too much where you have to put the input in to get it back straight again. It's not dead, it's just, well, it could be a little less lazy when you're on the highway and you've picked up a little bit of speed it's obviously a bit more behaved but then that uh, then you you have a little bit more steering inputs that you need to put into the automobile to to keep it straight not like again let's say it again not like the 50s where you're driving like that no it's just that um and it's not a workout no not at all because the steering is actually quite light it's just um it takes a little bit more concentration on your part to make sure that you're uh, driving straight at all times which like I've said before in other automobiles it's not always a bad thing because it just basically means that you're engaged all the time which at the end of the day ends up becoming well safer for you your passengers and everybody else on the road NVH I must admit is actually quite good I did not expect it here we'll go over somewhat of a rough patch and the car seems to absorb it pretty darn well and it doesn't rattle around and you don't hear much of the noise outside as well the car isn't very heavy but the way that it sits on the ground and it recovers from blemishes on the road is actually pretty good the 1.5 liter gasoline engine does provide 
a kick, so to speak. Uh, when you're in first gear and when you start setting off, uh, the engine feels quite peppy. The transmission changes uh, from first into second gear as quickly as it can, so it moves you as quickly as possible on first, on, rather on first gear. That's probably to help the fuel economy or the fuel efficiency as best as possible. It isn't a gasoline engine uh, that is has a turbo, like let's say, for example, the Okavango, or it's not a diesel engine, like let's say, for example, the Innova, which we have video on by the way but obviously those cars are much much more expensive and this is well a heck of a lot less right i will say that the next logical question would be is if the automobile itself can carry a full complement and still be this easy to drive well uh we did not test it in this particular vehicle but on its sibling or cousin or however else that you want to refer to it that has the exact same engine with the exact same figures and transmission as well um it won't scream when you've got a full complement entering into let's say steep parking structures with that with inside the metro that's not an issue at all uh when you're talking about let's say for example will it make it to baguio that might be a completely different story altogether but i can say that for the parking structures at least inside the city the engine is not screaming bloody murder like it needs help from a push in the back or anything like that it still will be able to do it with some relatively of some form of relative ease is what i'm getting at the suspension is good the ride quality is good but i'm sure that the seats also have something to do with that i doubt that these are zero gravity seats but the fact that they're leather and they're comfortable, yeah, I like that. When we set off to drive the Levina, one of the big questions, truthfully, was going to always be, how does it set itself apart from its cousin, in-law, brother, sibling, half-sister, whatever it is that you, or however it is that you want to refer to the expander. And the truth is, it's actually very, very similar from visibility to NVH to engine response to suspension. And it's not a bad thing simply because, well, all the good things that you found in the Expander can also be found in here, the Levina. It is extremely difficult to review the Levina without comparing it to the Expander because essentially it's almost the exact same car. Well, almost. It doesn't house Nissan's intelligent mobility with stuff like adaptive cruise and an around view monitor. And then there's other stuff too, like there's no speed sensing door locks, there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then there's the price. It starts off well at 1,029,000 Philippine pesos, but then the top end model is 1,209,000 Philippine pesos for this VL model. It seems for the meantime that the Levina will cater to the brand loyalists, while the others, well, will tend to focus more on the competition. The good news is, is that Nissan houses the really good stuff. You got Nissan Intelligent Mobility and e-Power. So hopefully we'll see it sometime soon to help raise the Levina's game.